if we even want to know that. All right, and then we'll take our mask off. Right. All right. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I am good. I'm excited. I am definitely excited for this conversation. Um, so just to kind of set the stage. Um, so, so we're doing a series of conversations um, and it's called Rebrand Black. And um, so it's the Brand Camp uh, virtual conference. We're excited to be here. But these conversations are conversations around Black genius, Black excellence, and Black innovation. And so I'm super excited to have you here today. And so before we get started, I always have to ask this question. Um, there's a lot going on in the, in the world today. How are you doing? Are you safe? Are you in a good place? Yeah, I'm, I am, you know, mentally, physically, um, spiritually in a great place. I'm thankful that even though many people have perished around us, my immediate family, everybody is safe. Um, just in a good mental space as it relates to it you know, moving into a new year and, and what all that will bring for us um, will not be like 2020, um, but also that we got through 2020 and just the message of there's still a lot of hope. And so I'm I'm excited about that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Glad to hear that for sure. My family's good as well, too. So, so for everybody, um, this is Alexis Kerr, the head of multicultural marketing for Cadillac. And um, I'm excited just to have this moment, just to be able to share some things. I think there'll be some good stuff that we want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to I want to kick this off. Um, there's a lot that's happening in the world today, and mm -hmm. so um, I think we have to give people their flowers while they're here. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we wait too long to be able to acknowledge people who are doing really incredible things, especially in our community. And so I don't think we talk enough about our sheroes. Lots mm -hmm. of times we see a lot of stories that are male dominated and some of them might be deserving, mm -hmm. right? But um, I know I'm a girl dad. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter named Kennedy. She's 10 years old. And so, so when I see you in your position at Cadillac and I've, and I've known you for a few years to be able to see your journey, for me, I think it's inspiring for my daughter and for other young ladies. And so I would like for you to be able to share your journey. Because I think sometimes people think that, you know, you or other people just kind of arrive somewhere <laughs> and like, and it just automatically <clears throat> happens. So I would love for you to be able to share your story a little bit. Yeah. So um, most recently um, I started leading the multicultural marketing team at Cadillac. And so that encompasses African-American, Hispanic-American LGBTQ+, plus, but also uh, Chinese American specifically, because as we think about Asia, we sell the most cars in China. Um, and so that piece is exciting. So I've been doing that close to two years. But prior to that, I had the opportunity to work in New York leading Book by Cadillac, which was our first ever, the first ever subscription program and expanding from New York to L.A., um, to also Dallas. And so um, that was a great opportunity. And then prior to that, I was in Dubai. And so I led a project that started in the U.S. revolutionizing the service lane experience, which was amazing to make consumers as they entered the service lane. It's not about selling brake pads, tires or what have you. It did research um, for a year to realize that consumers really were anxious. And from that feeling, starting with the consumer first and understanding what are the things that we need to do to relieve their tension. And then once they get out of their vehicle safely with their children, when they're in the lounge, that's a much, much better place to serve them. And so I did that at seven dealers piloted across the U.S. And out of that, I was asked to go to Dubai and start the customer experience department there travel to over 88 countries, including Saudi Arabia. So an amazing experience because I love to travel. And at that time I was there a year and a half and then repatriated back to Detroit um, to pack up my house and then to New York. So I've been in an automotive um, arena for 20 years now, okay. um, but I've done a number of jobs engineering because my undergraduate is in IT and engineering and then my MBA is in marketing. And so 
it's a great opportunity to kind of, my career has honestly been ebbs and flows, you know, there are the highs and the lows, but it's character that really brings you out of these, you know, lows and character that keeps you humble enough when you're at the highs to be able to still work with people, knowing that um, over time you're going to have a low at some point in time. And so this job has allowed me to really lean in and build community. And that piece is important and that will sustain me personally, much longer than the job will, but also in building community, I'm given access to a lot of other entrepreneurs, amazing entrepreneurs like yourself, um, who are doing great things in the city, for the city, and, and for people of color. Yeah, you know, I think that's incredible. Um, and I can just see how, how it's opened up an entire world for you mm -hmm. in terms of traveling the world and making an impact. And, um, and I think these are the kind of stories that people need to be able to see that they're are amazing opportunities in the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. um, there's mm -hmm. opportunities in the C-suite mm -hmm. um, and you can make an impact. I know even on some of the projects that we've worked on, just when I've looked at the people that you've tapped to be mm -hmm. able to do it. Um, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? There was a young lady who was at the Tiger Club mm -hmm. um, at, yeah. um, at CCS. Toya Golden, she's been amazing. And, and it's interesting, kind of serendipitous how we met. Her mom uh, works at GM and her mom was speaking on behalf of Cadillac at a event in Miami. And she came just as a guest okay. um, and she had a camera. And I was like, wait a minute, we don't have a photographer. Can you go upstairs, grab your camera? And she was amazing. So she ended up, you know, taking pictures of Sanaa Lathan, engaging in the back. You know, I was whispering in the air, hey, I need you to get this shot, that shot. And she and, you know, coming back to her, she was like, I was so nervous. I was so intimidated, but I just pushed through. And so it just shows you if people are given an opportunity and she worked um, on that project and two or three other projects. And once COVID hit, she was a resource that I was able to tap here in Detroit for a lot of the projects that we, we were doing here. And it's, you know, just seeing her growth in that, you know, about a year since now it's a year and a half since the first time we worked together. That piece has just been amazing. And also being able to to leverage her. We had her on set for doing behind the scenes photography with um, Lamont Rucker. We had her shoot our LGBTQ campaign on campus. It was totally COVID safe. But, you know, those are just the opportunities that happened because she happened to have her camera and was willing to assist at a time that she was just a guest. And, and it's that's what access is. It's not just leveraging a person one time, but we managed to build a solid relationship with her and lean into her expertise. Um, she's an amazing photographer, but she's also open to, to learning even more. And I think this that collaboration that she's getting this access now that she'll be able to leverage that on her resume for years to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, even, even you um, seeking an opportunity for a young lady like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and obviously, if you stay ready, you, you know, you never have to get ready, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's a great point that comes out of that. So now, if we kind of go back, I'm trying to remember back to when we first met. Um, it it might have been 2014 ish, but I know mm -hmm. that it was a it was a branding workshop that we were doing. And so, I was just thinking back because I know we're working together now. And I'm thinking like, wow, just. This has been a journey. Yes, yes. And I think sometimes, even, even when I talk to people about working with brands and um, building relationships, people think that this stuff just happens <laughs> automatically, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And so, you know what I'm saying? So I would, so I'd love to kind of dig into kind of, kind of how we've had a chance to kind of grow like the business relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just kind of engage, just to kind of give some people some like, you know, I get like behind the scenes kind of how relationships are kind of built. Yeah, and I, I think the one key message is that relationships aren't built overnight. Re mm -hmm. Relationships can be destroyed overnight, but they're not built overnight. And so it's been that five to six years since we met you. I'm, I think I saw you speak somewhere and then I was like, oh, he has a brand camp. Let me check that out. And, you know, let me see, you know, what's there. And then, you know, I actually paid and went um, personally for a business that I had, a jewelry and accessories business that I had. And then, you know, out of that, you know, I was just keeping my eye on you. But at work, you know, we had a, a opportunity for us to work together. I was like, maybe I'll bring him in to do some branding work, just in personal branding. Mm -hmm. So we had the business branding 
piece. But, you know, I noticed with my team um, internally, we just didn't have the personal branding together and people were personally wanting to do well at work. And I was like, you know, Haji is an expert on that. Let me bring him in and, and see how it works. And then we did a part two with a smaller group, but you gave us headshots, which was amazing. I still have coworkers who was like, <laughs> I remember that. I love Sean. I loved Hodge. We loved the headshots. Um, and just a total experience. And, and so what I will say is like consistently you have, you know, under promised and over delivered. And it's kind of that spirit that, you know, led me to say when COVID hit, I wonder what Hodge is doing. I wonder what's going on. I'm, I'm sure he's engaged. And I saw a lot of your, your, your content online. And, and so, you know, the other thing I think is important when people are trying to work with brands, stay focused and, and just build more content, consistently be doing something and don't let it always be spread across, you know, the jack of all trades and master of of, of none is difficult for brands to work with because I need to know I'm going to Hodge for this. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's great that he can do these other things, but Hodge is my guy, Detroit entrepreneur, you know, that's what he can do. Now you also are, you know, a great influencer for the brand, you know, mm -hmm. a great micro influencer. And so we moved into that. But, um, I think one of the misnomers is that people say I can do everything, mm -hmm. which sometimes in, it makes it that they can't do anything really, really well. And so because of that, it's hard to call on them when you need something specifically done mm -hmm. because um, they haven't leaned in enough. And so what I love about you is that you lead into the spirit of entrepreneurship, to the spirit of community. And so when I when the brand was at a place where we were doing a lot of things remote, it, it just made sense that, you know, I picked up the phone and said, hey, Hodge, what are you doing? You know, what's going on? Um, what are you doing for small businesses? Is there something that we can lean in? We really want to start in the backyard in Detroit. And so you're the only person that was top of mind for me to think about engaging with. So this is perfect. Yeah. And I really appreciate that, too. Also, too, I know even 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 in our conversations that I don't know how true this is for other brands, but I know even as we were talking and working on stuff, I also saw you as a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And so, because there are very strict guidelines mm -hmm. that Cadillac has. And so throughout the process, I would always find you said, okay, watch out for this. Sure. Be mindful of this. Think about these kind yeah. of things because like, just like you said that it takes years to build something, mm -hmm. but it but it can be destroyed overnight. Mm -hmm. And if these small things, because we don't know what we yeah. don't know. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. And so it takes a lot of time and energy for a brand person to really, you know, have that customized approach of, let me give you a couple of do's and don'ts. Let me see the content um, before you, you know, post it or what have you. But it's worth it because in the long run, long term, we can have a relationship that's that we're able to build on versus you shooting content that is epically amazing from your perspective. But from a brand perspective, you know, someone may be standing in the street, we notice in photography, someone may have a seatbelt on, but we can't see it, you have to be, you know, that has to be seen, heads have to be in a certain place in the headrest. And so even though we may convey this to a content creator, they just may forget. And so, you know, you asking them to go and redo it can be frustrating as well. And so I've just found that we say, you know, unless there's a professional there, it's probably not gonna be content that we can leverage. Um, and so it can be daunting for someone trying to work with a brand, even when they have the written parameters. But it was important that I personally made sure that, you know, we had a good relationship where I was like, just send me the content ahead of time. And, and this is why this wouldn't work, but this could also possibly work. And, and again, it takes time, but that's what a contribution to community is. It, it is more of your time. It is more of your energy, knowing that, you know, 2022 and beyond, you'll be in a good place and, and now provided you access that you can work with any other brand in an amazing way. And that's really the spirit at which I work. You know, yes, we're going to do great things for Cadillac and you have done amazing things so far. You know, whether it was the campaigns that you did for Father's Day uh, with Kennedy, which was a great um, or, you know, our Concrete Dreams concept, which worked out really, really well. And now this and then um, just a number of things that are coming later on this year. You know, I've been excited. Our team is super thrilled. The article you wrote on LinkedIn, um, that was great, too. And also just that leaning in and giving more mm -hmm. is always just, you know, at the core of your spirit. And so it makes it so easy to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. And I love um, 
You know, I love working with you. I love working with Cadillac. It's been amazing so far. So let's talk a little bit about about the project that we're working on. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I remember getting a call from you saying, ask me like what's happening. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because on that call, you told me about, about the things that were important to you. Mm-hmm. And we talked about small business, supporting mm-hmm. small business yeah. and supporting diverse small businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we got into a conversation and, um, and I'm happy to announce that, you know, we're working on a brand, um, a rebrand sit, a rebrand cities, brand accelerator. And at the core of that, we're going to work with 12 businesses. And as we started having the conversation, um, you really started pressing or leaning in towards, okay, we need to be able to put resources in the hands not of just the event coordinator kind of thing, mm-hmm. even though there's value and there's strategy mm-hmm. and things that have behind the scenes. Um, and so and so we went through a process and Cadillac is putting up fifty thousand dollars for small businesses in the city of Detroit. So I would I would love for you to be able to share your thoughts and your approach mm-hmm. on why this was important and why Cadillac wants to really double down on supporting small local businesses in the city of Detroit. Yeah, and and I'll, you know, maybe back up and start with, you know, that is like just the beginning, you know, just the beginning of of where we wanted to start in the city. And then later this year, they will see that there's a huge announcement for our investment in small businesses uh, well beyond that. And then we have uh, partnerships as well with small businesses in and around the city that are also be coming um, and be announced that you'll, you'll see in the weeks to come. And so that was a good place to start because what we wanted to do is make sure that we didn't make a donation to an organization who's going to disperse the funds and not really have a lot of access as a from a brand standpoint to controlling it. And so we already had a relationship with you. It made sense to lean in and to leverage your audience in that scale and that size, that was really helpful. So, so that was the beginning of, of where we're starting with small businesses. And we wanted to really look at the, the data. The data showed us 40 to 60, 60% of all small businesses in and around many cities, you know, that, you know, had demise around COVID, they were black and brown businesses. And so we wanted to make sure we leaned in in a very thoughtful way. And so starting in our backyard, you, we, with you and two other influencers, we invested. And in investing that, we invested in their business. And, and as part of that, you're going to see that they are doing things to support um, community. So here we're working with you. We're working with two others, starting in our backyard in Detroit. And then later on this year, you will see bigger, much bigger announcements of of how we're moving around the nation to work with small businesses. And it's just important that we give back. Small businesses may have not been an initial pillar of our brand, but the ethos of it, which is entrepreneurship and other influencers that we have leveraged and supported like Hustle and John Henry, we continue to work with him. And so it's it's from that spirit that it just aligns perfectly with small businesses. And we want to you know, provide equity. And that's the beginning of equity is really supporting uh, places where they can get the resources that you'll be able to offer them as well as the exposure. So we're also helping with the exposure there as well. Yeah. And I think it's so powerful because I think um, as a community, there's not enough focus on ownership Mm -hmm. um, and creating something that could, from a generational standpoint, Mm -hmm. be something that you could hand down. Um, And so I think these are the kind of things that make it really important. I think also having Cadillac connected to this project Mm -hmm. brings a level of visibility um, and expectations to this project into the small business that are attracted to, which I think is going to be amazing. So I'm, I'm really excited about the stories that are going to come out of this um, and the business owners that we're going to be able to reach in so that their stories get out there and we help to make communities more sustainable. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that, that's what equity really is, is making sure that you're stable, but also that you have something to pass down. And and this is a time that we just need to be supporting. You know, many other large corporations are doing amazing things in this space. And we are just, you know, 
um, making sure we step up and support. And this is part of another bigger campaign that we're doing in reference to equity and justice internally in the organization with our employees, but also externally with our community. And now is a time that we lean in. And so this is not something that we're just starting. Uh, in Southeast Michigan, we make you know wonderful contributions from our corporate social responsibility pillars, but this is just a way for us to continuously lean in. And I love that you know partnering with you is just an extension uh, that feels like family. You're a friend of the brand is what I've been affectionately calling you know the people that we consistently work with um, for a number of different projects. So it's great to see over the last couple of years how you know, I've been able to truly build community and give access to people of color um, in ways to work with a brand so that they, again, can go on to do a lot of other new amazing things. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is really, really solid. Um, mm -hmm. So now with everything that's happening in the world, um, what are some of your thoughts in terms of the role that a brand can play mm -hmm. in this moment? Like, there's all kinds of things that are going on. So I'm very curious. I've seen some brands that just post, hey, I support you. And, you know, and there could be some value in that. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's more. So I'm just curious, just from this role that you um, sit in or seat you sit in, in terms of what should a brand or what could a brand's role be in this moment? Yeah, I think. Many brands, because they're not necessarily in this space, whether it be, you know, diversity, multicultural, there's this essence of I can't say nothing or I should say something, but I'm not sure what to say. And I always go back and that seems like to be the one of the biggest questions that I've gotten over the last six months. You know, what do brands do? Where do we start? And my answer is simply to start. Find people that are amazing in your community that are already doing something to support the people and support them, you know. So in supporting them, you don't necessarily have to advertise it or you may not necessarily make a statement, but you can support them in moving forward. And then that person is able to have more share of voice, um, more access more financial dollars to support their efforts. And then they're great nonprofits. You got to do your research that are also supporting these activities and events, whether it be marches, whether it be protests. Um, you know, there's many organizations that are doing nonviolent um, activism and people. And so you can just support them. And statements are great. Um, they're definitely necessary and there's a place for that. But there also needs to be financial dollars that are um, supporting the community. There needs to be this conversation with community. And then there also just needs to be, quite frankly, action because black and brown people, especially in the U.S., are kind of tired of just I'm supporting you. And so you got to talk about, well, what does that look like? You know, what does the funding look like? And that, these are even conversations that I've had to have with our executive leadership. Support looks like this, and then we need to push even further. And so it's support is an action, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. is a verb. Love is a verb. Mm -hmm. I see these are, you have to take action. And so we made a statement, but we also made a donation to the NAACP um, fund. And then I, you know, in the background with our teams put together a plan. And so this, you know, opportunity today is just one small piece in a much bigger plan um, that we're continuing to unveil over the next couple of months. And so it's just important that we, you know, continue down the path. And so um, that we do more, you know, have more, I would say, events and activations and conversations like this. It, it takes action gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. gotcha so now so i want to i want to talk about this like for a minute so i'm currently in an xt5 mm -hmm. um and i just want to share just a little bit of my experience and so like i really enjoy the xt5 um i have it's kind of like an office for me mm -hmm. uh it you know i have wi-fi in there so i find that you know if i did have to take my daughter to soccer practice I can just literally stay in the car. I can wait for, her, and I'm literally like getting work done. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter, like she, she loves. It's like we've been in the um, in the Escalade, but she she kind of likes the XT5. Um, mm -hmm. It's um, I think it's a great vehicle, especially as a small business owner. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love the style of it. Um, so I just want to get to share that with you. Like I'm not sure if you have 
a favorite vehicle out of yeah i'm in a ct4 okay. which is um the sedan i love it i'm i'm surprised i was in an xt5 then an xt4 and now i'm in the ct4 mm -hmm. so um that's part of our new and exciting sedan lineup it is a lot of fun to drive. Um, and I'm finding that, you know, I haven't been in a sedan in probably two or three years. So it yeah. is, you know, just the performance of it, the engine, kind of the noise of it, too. I really like that. The torque is great just for that, you know, mm -hmm. jump off on a light, obviously, safely. <laughs> but um, and I do love the crossovers, the new uh Escalade is out. Yeah. <laughs> it's out. Um, there's a couple of more of the uh, 2020s that are, you know, the dealers are selling down, which is great. But the sedan lineup is amazing. And, and the crossovers are fun. So I really do know why she likes it. And, you know, during COVID, we had a We Have Your Back campaign, which where you were kind of on the tail end of the bladder of you know, giving away, you know, some features in the car, providing Wi-Fi complimentary for a period of time, allowing people to delay their payments um, in vehicles for a number of months. So, you know, that piece too was part of us just pivoting our campaigns and really saying, this is what's, what's going on in the community and this is what's impacting our consumers and how can we support that? And so as I think about equity and justice and just everything that's happening in black communities in America, it's important that we just pivot in a way that's very authentic to the brand, to our ethos um, and who we are, you know, that boldness, that sophisticated, that's who we are as a brand, you know, never stop arriving in a Regina King campaign. Most people can see themselves in that driving through the old neighborhood. And so it all just came together in, in a way that made sense for, I would say, the community and the brand and supporting small businesses has been a big part of that. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So let's close with this. Um, so when I just think about just culture in general, I think mm -hmm. I think Cadillac just is such a strong part of just American culture. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, even when I watch certain videos or I'll, I'll go on the internet or I'll see people doing certain things, like, um, you know, I'd love to hear from you in terms of Cadillac's connection, just to culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't spend the day without, you know, looking at influencers who are doing amazing work, looking at not just celebrities, but real, real, real everyday people, looking at everyday people who are making valuable contributions, who are changing culture, whether it be in art, <clears throat> music, um, technology, you know, just all of those fields, black people have been part of kind of the epicenter of that and all of the changes. You know, if you think about tech and the first adapters to um, most of the technology, it tends to be black and brown people. And so because of that, we obviously need to stay connected to that community, but we also should be paying homage, you know, and not just pulling from, we should be giving back and not just Cadillac, but all brands should be really being thoughtful about what they're taking from culture and how are they providing some level of a 360 approach to really give back. And when you do that, you know, sales will increase, but really it's about the community that you want to help uplift and build. And so I've been thankful to be leading the charge at Cadillac in our thoughtful approach, you know, and how we not just put black people in front of commercials, but who's behind the camera? You know, are we supporting black directors? We have this year and even last year and in years in past, you know, with Spike Lee, with Dee Reese, who is the director of the actual Regina King spot. Um, Many other ones we've used in the past, B. Monet last year. And so how are we doing that in a really authentic way, paying homage to, you know, the person who's writing the script? Are we using black and brown script writers, you know, catering? Are we using black businesses and supporting them? And so it's really easy to put a black and brown person in front of the camera to say, yes, we get it. It's harder and it takes work that is well worth it to employ black people in the entire process. Writers, we want to give them access. You know, if I think about the Regina King spot and how wonderful it was when it came to the Hispanic community, I was like, no, we don't want to recreate that spot with a Hispanic person in it. We want to create a Hispanic spot with a Hispanic cast, Hispanic directors, Hispanic production company, 
writer, uh, creator, the agency team. You know, we had the Hispanic people at our agency partnership with Spike DDB actually be part of it. And that's really where we're giving access. And that's the access ethos that I'm talking about from beginning to end, soup to nuts. It's a celebration of Hispanic culture by the people, for the people, presented to the people. And that's what it's about. How are we doing that in the black community, LGBTQ plus community, Asian community? That's what true multicultural marketing is. It's it's not about just showing up in the way or in that a, a certain ethnicity, but really taking the time to be thoughtful about how did everybody contribute? How are we giving jobs to everybody in, in these communities? The lady who is an executive producer on many of the spots that we shot last year, this year or the end of last year, she was working at Instagram. And so it's because of that access that she had amongst a wonderful portfolio that she was able to move on to, you know, a job that she was, you know, well prepared for and um, and love. So it's that's the ecosystem I continue to try to build. It's not always perfect, but we've been, you know, very successful over the last year and a half since I've been in the job. And oh, by the way, it gets the numbers, you know. Everyone sometimes think about thinks about the diversity space and how that, you know, where's the bottom line? But the bottom line is always there as well, because our people in supporting them, they support, you know, the product and the product is amazing. Absolutely. absolutely. So this has been a great conversation. Yeah. Um, so, so I like to close with is um, if someone wanted to find you online. Where should we direct them to? So Twitter, uh, Instagram, I am Alexis Kerr. It is that easy. I'm also on LinkedIn, Alexis Kerr. But Twitter and Instagram are always really, really good. Clubhouse is a new app that is amazing. I'm always on there. But I respond to all of my, or at least read if I don't respond to um, my Instagram DMs, but at I am Alexis Kerr. I love to hear from people interested in their feedback and the campaigns that we've done. Um, there's going to be a certain number of new people that we work with in 2021, so I'm excited about that as well. That is great. That is great. So this is Alexis Kerr. This has been um, Rebrand Black, a series of conversations around Black genius, Black excellence, and Black culture. Uh, so again, I want to thank you, Alexis, for this time, this moment. And I'm looking forward to doing more work with you guys yes. um, and with Cadillac. But again, I love your commitment and the company's commitment to um, really supporting small business, mm -hmm. um, supporting creators, creatives, and mm -hmm. things like that. I think it um, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that people don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and not that you guys are trying to publish or tell everything that you do, but it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I think it's important for people to know that there's a commitment beyond just trying to get somebody just to yes. buy a yeah. product. So yeah. again, so I want to thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And congratulations on all of the work that you're doing. And I just, you know, thoughtfully want to say thank you for all that you continue to do, contribute, you know, to the community and continue to push um, in ways that we need definitely in Detroit, but also across the nation. All right. Well, thank okay. you. Thank you.